Welcome back designers. In this video, we're gonna take a look at an alternative to Adobe Illustrator. So as most of you know, I have been an Adobe Illustrator user for years, over 15 years to be exact. So this series, we're gonna take a look at a few different options you've got if you maybe just don't wanna feed into the Creative Cloud subscription service, or you just can't afford it right now. In this first video, we're gonna take a look at a program called Affinity Designer. Now we're not gonna cover the whole program. I'm gonna go through the installation process. We're gonna do kind of a first look. And then I'm gonna take a few days and actually work with this a little bit before I come back and let you know a little bit more about it and my impressions of it. Mainly, can it be a good replacement for Adobe Illustrator? That's the whole point of this. Now the basics of this software, it's been around for a few years. I haven't looked up the exact date, but I've heard about it quite a bit. And it is a vector-based program. So everything that you can do inside of Adobe Illustrator, I don't know yet, you're supposed to be able to do with Affinity Designer. So let's hop into the software, we'll get this installed, kind of give a first looks of this, and then I'll come back to you once I've had a chance to use it a little bit more and we'll kind of see impressions. I'd love to hear you guys' comments. If you're already an Affinity Designer user, pop down in the comments section. Let me know how you feel about it and if you think that it is a good alternative to Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so here we are inside of Affinity Designer. This is a first time run. You can see you can show this panel on startup, which normally I get rid of these. I don't need them. I don't want them. Uh, it can be a good starting point though, because a lot of times this content will update as you use the program. So if there's new tutorials or new product offerings or anything like that, this can be a decent screen for you, but that's totally up to you. I normally get rid of this uh, and then we're gonna go new document. Now there's another way that you can get the new document. Of course, I'm gonna cancel that real quick. We can go up to file, new. Most of this right now is looking the same as Adobe Illustrator or at least close. I'm not having any issues wondering what's going on here, right? I mean, creating a new document is creating a new document. A couple of things I did notice is that there's some few different options here like feet and yards, which we don't have inside of Adobe Illustrator and same with meters, I don't think it's there as well. The rest of this pretty much the same from what I can tell. I don't see a lot of huge differences here. I mean, we've got presets. We can set everything up here so you can go A0 to A10, letter size, legal size, ledger. You can do different dimensions, different margins, bleed. So all of these options are pretty much the same as what we would see inside of Adobe Illustrator with a few minor differences. I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna select a letter page, eight and a half by 11, DPI, uh, 300, I'm working in vector, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now I'm gonna hit okay. So pretty basic so far from what I can tell, but let's have a look around and look at a few of the different menu selections that we have here and toolbars and go from there. So just like Adobe Illustrator, down the left-hand side, you've got all your basic tools. I can see everything here from a move tool. We've got artboard tool. There's our node tool. Now I'm assuming what they're meaning here, this is kind of like your selection tool, and this is your direct selection tool. So the difference between the black arrow and the white arrow inside of Adobe Illustrator. This one here, we've got a corner tool. I'm gonna look into that a little bit more. Pen tool, of course, pencil tool. There's our vector brush tool, so just like your paintbrush tool. Fill, transparency tool, that's a new one for me, I don't know that one. Place image tool, this one's kind of nice. I do a lot of this when I'm working inside of Adobe Illustrator, so I'm always placing images because I do my sketch first, bring it into Illustrator and work on it from there. It's just a menu item inside of Illustrator. You go file, place, just like that. This is kind of nice though, having it as an icon. Here's our crop tool, of course, and then we've got our different shape tools. The cog tool is something that I could have used a few years ago. I remember learning how to rotate items and being able to draw like two circles and then create a little sort of trapezoid, rotate it 10 times or whatever I needed around the circle in order to make cogs, so that would have been nice. Here's our type tool and of course our color picker, our view tool. Oh, that's different, view tool instead of hand tool. So it still does the same thing, I think. What if we press, yeah, so if I press space bar, we still get the same thing. I get kind of a temporary hand tool. And then of course our magnifying or our zoom tool. So each one of these it looks like has some preferences here. So we've got artboard and we can actually insert an artboard from that. Let's click on this one. So our node fill convert action. So I'm gonna have to look at these a little bit more. Closed curve, break curve, smooth curve. 
This is kind of nice. I'm seeing a lot of the tools that we have that are actually broken up into different tools inside of Illustrator are actually up here in this toolbar. Uh, we've got different snap options here. This is looking pretty nice so far. So smooth and smart. We'll have to look at the difference between those as well. All right, let's click on this one. We've got our corner tool. So corner type, square, bake corners. I'm gonna check into that one as well. I'll get back to you on that. All right, so as you can see, basic layout is pretty much what I expected to see by installing the software. A few options up here across the top. It looks like we have, so here, pixel view, retina pixel view, and outline view mode. So I'm assuming with this, if we were to draw shapes, this is kind of like our preview mode inside of Adobe Illustrator where we can, there's our basic shapes, right? And then if we want to see our outline mode, so if I had two different ones, right, it would show me just the lines without any fills or any shape gradients or, or anything like that. Next we have our move tool. So this is kind of nice too, having this up at the front, right? Normally I've got mine over here. Um, but I also know there's keyboard shortcuts in the, inside of Illustrator. So some of this stuff, I mean, it's good. I think a lot of new designers might find a lot of these useful. Knowing the keyboard shortcuts like I do, I don't use the buttons inside of Illustrator as much. Of course, these are our rotate, so flip horizontal, rotate anti-clockwise, alignment tools, force pixel alignment. We're going to look at these a little bit more once I learn some of them. And then this would be like my Pathfinder tool inside of Adobe Illustrator. So we'll play with some of those as well. Then of course we have the palettes running down the sides. So we've got color, swatches, stroke, brushes, and appearance. Below that one we've got layers, effects, styles, and text styles. Now I'm kind of liking this, this effects screen. This is kind of neat. I don't use a lot of effects inside of Adobe Illustrator, but every now and then I do. I know that there's ways to do this inside of Illustrator and you've got your menu options. I'm just, this one looks a little bit, a little bit more intuitive. It's a little bit simpler to use, I think. Styles, I like the way that they've done this. So they actually show kind of what it's gonna look like. That's pretty cool. Strange and Strange 2. It's like Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange 2. And then at the bottom, we've got our Transform, History, and our Navigator. Kind of like that as well. Okay, so this is a basic overview. And again, like I said, I'm not gonna get into the actual workings of this. I'm gonna play with this tool over the next few days. And then we're gonna actually come back and I'll talk a little bit more about it in the next video. We'll walk through a design that I made with this as opposed to one that I did in Adobe Illustrator. And I'll show you kind of maybe the differences behind it. Um, or if we have time, what I'd really like to do is take the same design, two different videos, do one inside of Adobe Illustrator, one inside of Affinity, and give you an idea of kind of my impressions of how the software works. All right, designers, so that's it for a high-level overview on Affinity Designer. Now, this is just the first part in a series that I'm gonna be putting together. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't a quick 10 minute video that shows you all the different features inside of Affinity. I didn't wanna do that. I also didn't wanna make one 35 minute long video that covers everything. I wanna take my time on this. I wanna kinda of give it to you in little chunks and give you my opinion through each one. So in the next video, we're actually gonna take a deeper look at some of the tools. We're gonna to pull a design into Affinity and work with the tools a little bit and kinda of see what we can come up with. I'll see how it is compared to the workflow that I have inside of Adobe Illustrator, which you can find in a lot of these videos here. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss those upcoming videos. All right, designers, I had to get back to work now. Get out there and design something, and I'll see you in the next one.